Good morning. We're back on Inside Tennessee with Knoxville Mayor India Kincannon. Don Bosch. Uh, Mayor, nice to see you. I wished it was days of old where we were all in the studio, but uh, thank you for being here today with us. But uh, I want to follow up on what Susan was talking about, and really it, it loops around in several areas, and two of which we've talked about. Uh, the ballpark, uh, which has been proposed by Randy Boyd, and I know you've said there's no negotiations, but in Randy's proposal, um, it includes uh, what some might consider, and when it terms to government budgets, modest contributions by both the city and the county. And when we talk about our COVID response, we aren't talking about just the city of Knoxville, we're talking about the entire county. I'm curious to what the current relationships are with, with you and Mayor Jacobs and county administration, because frankly, it looks like from the outside, we've got some different philosophies um, that are going on and uh, between, between city administration and county administration. It's certainly not hostile, but I'm curious to how it's going and how you manage to reconcile that for our community overall. Yeah, well, we, uh, we do have a common purpose and, and certainly uh, when, you, when you're talking about a global pandemic, the more united and coordinated you can be in the response, the better for the community. So uh, I noticed that Mayor Jacobs uh, wears a mask right now, even though um, you know, he had some hesitation uh, earlier on. So um, I know that he's been a great role model in that respect. There's no secret that we have different uh, political philosophies um, and, and I, you know, we both would readily admit that, but uh, we also both care about uh, the mental health impact of this pandemic. Uh, we care about the economic impact or are trying to work to balance those. And, and to me, the best way we deal with that is, is, is address the, uh, <clears throat> the virus and how it's spreading and try to mitigate that. And then that's the best way to help our community as a whole economically and our mental health and everything else. So uh, Mayor Jacobs and I, uh, working together, uh, what benefits the city benefits the county and vice versa. And I, I look forward to talking to him about other joint projects that are, aren't pandemic related, including uh, potential baseball mixed use development in the old city. I, uh, that would obviously be a regional benefit. And to the extent that the county uh, would like to participate in those benefits, it'd be great if they participate in the, in the development and, uh, process as well. Mayor, let's well, pivot and, and to that... an issue. Oh, go ahead, Don. Well, I was going to say, that sort of begs the question, historically under our previous Mayor Burchett and now under Mayor Jacobs, they've been uh, reluctant to fund bricks and mortar uh, that they think either the private sector should do or, frankly, the county government should be involved in. Do you think that you would support a baseball project without county funds in it if that were to come around? Uh, I think we, we haven't had any of those conversations yet, so I'd hate to uh, prematurely make a decision based on zero information. So I'd like to have those discussions. Uh, I'd also, I think it's really important to hear from the people of Knoxville and hear what they uh, think of these plans. And, and also when it comes, you know, everyone's for the idea, but when it comes to paying for it, uh, how we do that to make sure the benefits to the community exceed the cost. That's, that's the main thing, and I, I'd, I'd want to hear from the people too. That's that's uh, equally important uh, than than just hearing from my counterparts down the hall. Mayor, let's pivot to another issue that has really dominated the local and national discussion, and that is policing. And body cameras <laughs> under your administration are moving forward. They should be on our officers by the fall. Um, talk about why you think the benefits outweigh the costs for that, and what you're expecting from that po new policy moving forward. Yeah, I'm really proud uh, that we are moving forward with body cameras. It's been something uh, that's been uh, something the community's wanted for many years, and, and the police officers also want it. Uh, it builds mutual accountability and credibility and trust, um, and I think uh, will be uh, another tool to help uh, build strong community relations and accountability between law enforcement and the community they're here to serve and protect. So I'm excited about it. I know our officers are too. I do think it's important uh, to realize that it's not a panacea. Um, it has to be just another tool. And we also want to continue to work uh, to build you know, our police advisory review committee and make sure that we have policies in place that uh, give our officers as much training as they can get. I know Chief Thomas considers training the number one way to have a strong law enforcement um, you know, community and, and well-trained officers are key to all of that. So 
We are having a series of community meetings with city council and, and KPD, and they, they've been going really well. Um, and we have another one next week on use of force, which is a, a policy that we've already updated uh, just, in the la just in the last few months since the uh, George Floyd murder. Um, we've updated that and KPD is very professional. And I think the more people learn about what they have been doing, the more we see that there's always room for improvement, but they're already doing some excellent work. So mayor on that topic, uh, I think one of the complaints I hear from the public and I'm sort of on uh, the inside of a lot of these discussions from both directions is it's not that we're just getting body cams, but what will the media and the public's access be in a timely fashion to footage from the body cameras? And, and I think one of the complaints I hear is, well, we have cruiser cams, but sometimes it's weeks or months before the public can even see or hear that video and audio. So do you have, have you had any discussions about public accessibility to this data? Yeah, I, we're going to be following this, the, the state laws on this, uh, similar to, I'm sure you're uh, more familiar than most as a criminal defense attorney, that people uh, ha are innocent until proven guilty. And we need to make sure that if, if police are involved in, in um, a body camera video that has innocent people around, that they we have time to redact those images. So, so we have to balance the public's right to see things with also the public's right to privacy um, and, and the rule of law and, and due process. So it's a, it's a balancing act. And I think that uh, we wanna you know, be as open and transparent as possible within the confines of the law. Only about a minute left in this block. Susan, I'll let you in um, in the next one. But Mayor, if we can just follow up with the discussion that you had with council about adding uh, professional mental health a person that would ride along with a police officer, and this is through Helen Ross McNabb Behavioral yep. Health Center, um, and uh, sort of a, a pilot project that is is launching. Explain to our viewers why you think that's a good idea and how the community might benefit from moving in that direction. Right. Well, I, I, a lot of times uh, when people call the police, sometimes it's for a, a crime that's happening right now. Sometimes it's when someone's having a mental health crisis. And luckily, our police officers have crisis intervention training where they have some knowledge and background for how to respond to those kinds of crises. But the people at, at Helen Ross McNabb are trained social workers, and they can offer even more uh, abilities and professional skills to de-escalate those situations. Our, our police officers do a great job in that realm. But we're going to try this pilot where a social worker can ride along with an officer and, and be in their way to respond in a way. And we're gonna try it out and if it works well, we'll expand it. Uh, and, and there's a co-response model, that's what we're piloting. We might also um, try to try a, a, a kind of model where social workers ride along separate from KPD once, once they know that it's a relatively safe environment. That's been a model that can build on the co-response model. So we are listening to the community. I share these concerns and I'm, open to the discussion on how we reimagine public safety, how, what makes the, co the community safe. And, and mental health crises are a big part of it. And I think it's important that we also have these discussions with mental health providers and support through the county and state partners, because we want to prevent mental health crises. And, and that means more treatment, more drug addiction treatment, uh, more treatment for people before they get to the crisis point. So that's an important part of the discussion as well. Susan Richardson-Williams will lead us off in the next block. We're back in just moments right here on Inside Tennessee.